On campus, we began to pray from 100 level to 200 level. Persistent prayer. Persistent prayer. When we finished school prayer, and I happened to, those days our church in the village was a praying church, right? So when I finished praying in school, and I get back home in the same prayer pool. Oh, I was being stretched in the spirit. And we prayed for three years. And the heavens opened. And the Holy Ghost came down. I'm not talking about power. People falling. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost coming down and walking on campus like a human being. And these were the experiences chronic unbelievers came and would just meet you and say I am tired of lying just help me we will lead them to Christ ensure that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit and it continued for two months that was the first time I experienced what a revival was in a revival you may not need an evangelist Jesus the presence of God chokes the hearts of men and causes their souls to bow down in repentance. The heavens open. We didn't know what we were engaging by persistent prayer. We prayed even during exam season. Prayed when the school started, when the hostel was scanty. We engaged it. We engaged it. We engaged it for years. Until we became used to it, we now this love basking in his flames, not knowing that it was engaging the key of David. The hearts of men that were locked with brass and narcotic stones. Have you ever been to a hotel that uses computer card to open the door? You just clog. <laughs> and the big bolts will just click. It opens. And no man. Those guys, they didn't lose their salvation. No follow up. I remember one guy that I remember a black axe. I didn't know he used to terrorize me. I came late because those days you wake up early, then you put your bucket on the line. You saw a long line. And when I come to the tap, somebody will remove his own bucket. And so then now, if I come to the common room where people are smoking, they stop smoking till I leave. <laughs> You know, I enjoy some <laughs> some leverage actually. <laughs> and I, I was now wondering where the guy knew me that he was honoring me by removing his bucket, putting it at the last, carrying my own. Food. He was one of the people that gave his life to Christ. The key of David began to open things. He began to open things. It was during that season that the anointing to slay, this, can, this anointing that brings people down, it was locked from heaven. Unlocked. But during that time, many things were being opened. If I trace my story in my work with God, that point was a transition point where capacity, mighty capacity started coming. Because a key was released. And the key is specialized in doing what? In opening doors. There are some deposits in your spirit that you may never know are there until they are open. That key of David was, was effectual in his operations as he opened things. And so it was a key of David that was engaged in the book of Acts chapter 12. Remember, it is what specialized with what? With doors. Now, let us see how many doors they had to prevail over. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. But because he saw it, saw it, because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then 
were the days of unliving bread. And when he had apprehended him, put him in prison, and delivered him to what? Four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Now, four quaternions of soldiers. That means there were four cells and 16 guards. The cells, you go from one gate, four gates. And then in each gate, there were four soldiers. So four quaternions of soldiers. So that was why in the kingdom keys it was the key of David that was required because this was a limitation of doors. And prayers, the Bible says, were made. What? Without season. That's what engages it. There's a reason why I always put say that thing, inconsistency lies the power. I've seen it. I don't know much of... <laughs> I know little. <laughs> but the one I know, I, I, I know it well. It's not a lie. It's not a lie. It's true. What I saw, what came down from heaven was not a lie. The key of David was engaged. And then suddenly, there was no barrier that was forged by a door that could hold Peter down. Because the Bible says that this key of David, when it opens a door, no man can shut it. So we're not told that the doors that were open were later shut. There was no account to show that those doors were shut later. Even the iron gate of the city. You see, the thing is that the key has its way with doors. So even if it's the iron gate, anything that looks like a door, Hallelujah. Paul in his ministry said that God has set before him an effectual door, has opened it. All right? God has granted an opportunity. He said there are many adversaries. In the midst of adversaries, the door, the effectual door, still open. But you see, the principle of engaging that key is the principle of persistent prayer. And just like the preacher said yesterday, we engage persistent prayer when the situation is an unusual situation. So we cannot go on with a normal prayer style in the midst of turbulence the midst of situations orchestrated against us from the realm of the spirit. We engage those situations, we engage those circumstances through the instrumentality of persistent prayers. Persistent prayers. We keep at it. We keep at it. We keep pressing into it. We keep calling upon the name of the Lord. We keep pressing. And some of you that are younger ones, we are not saying we are older, but those of you that are younger, you are opportune to be exposed to some of these things that will release your spirit at your age. You are, you are blessed to have that advantage because you will discover that there are some times that the key of David can even go into your future. And it opens things in your future before you come. By the time you are arriving there, you know somebody did over time before my arrival. The key of David that opened it and no man shut it. That shut it and no man opened it. So till this day, that spiritual market is shut because the key of David was used. Hallelujah. So we are going to engage the power of persistent prayer. 
You know, when demons operate, what they normally do is they like shutting you down. Engage the key of the We have seen that key open wombs that were medically certified to be incapable of holding any seed. Hallelujah. The key of David. That's what we want to engage through persistent prayer. There are many things that happen when the key of David is released, is in operation. Because it is the key of the kingdom of heaven. But you are the one that uses it. And the way to use it is through persistent prayer. Then demand is made on it from the heavens. It is borne by the hand of an angel into the territory of request. And then it begins to function. One thing about the key of David is this. You can invite it into the territory. You can call it to come through persistent prayer, but you cannot tell the key to stop opening. You don't have any formula to to invoke it. So okay, you have we are satisfied now. Stop. It keeps. <laughs> it's just like you set fire on a bush and you went to sleep. When it has spread, you may not have the ability to call it back. The key of David keeps on opening and shutting things. That was what was coming to my heart while the service went on. The key of David. We are going to use that key. Because I felt that when we did the last prayer stretch, we didn't use the power that came with that prayer. A lot of power came with that prayer. The key. We didn't engage it. He said, it is you that we bind, not the angel. It is you, it's upon your binding that the angel goes to bind. It's upon your losing that the angel goes to lose. He said, I have set before you an open door. So the Philadelphian church was able to know the open door because it was to them that the revelation of the key of David came. That means that church was a church of prayer. Jesus acknowledged that they had little strength, indicative of the fact that numerically they were not a force to reckon with. But they had the key of David to, on their side, at their disposal. Because they wielded a great strength and influence. And on the strength of that, they had an open door. Their number was nothing to reckon with. They had little strength numerically. But they wielded mighty influence. So much so that an open door was set before them.